The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. You know, we have Tom on t from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Hey, uh, how you guys doing? Nico? Doing great. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter's outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the Primal Edge. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 927 6648 Now your hosts, Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark. Good morning. I'm Nico DeHaan. Welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle, where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world. To recover our natural health and regain our rights and freedoms. Good morning. I'm Paige. Yeah. Hi, Paige. Hey. Uh, <laughs> it's a beautiful day in downtown St. Petersburg, 51 degrees, and uh, it's uh, cool. For yeah, us. we had to wear our little nice. jackets this morning. I woke up, had went to sleep with the air conditioning on, and... Got up and turned the heat on. <laughs> That's the way <laughs> Only it is in here. Florida. That's for sure. Hey, pick up our Health Signals newsletter. This is news you can use every day, every week. Got a brand new one out mm -hmm. there, and we're talking about Google's uh, health data harvesting and all the things we talked about. Pretty the last creepy, two weeks. isn't it? It's very creepy, and mm -hmm. I think it's only going to get worse. I always also remind you, please pick up our Primal Edge, our One Shot Wonder. This is over 310 cell ready liquid ingredients, so it's easy to take. And, of course, it's all powered by fulvic, uh, fulvic and humic acids. And that's... Uh, Nature's miracle molecule. It helps yeah. us get the good stuff in our bodies. And the bad stuff out. And especially important during these uh, trying times with, uh, you know, the holidays The holiday and season. Like yep. Best way to stay healthy is let your body keep itself healthy. Yeah, and if you're taking other vitamins, uh, which I do also, uh -huh. the fulvic and humic acid in the primal edge will let those things work a lot better. Tons of research about the health That's of it. Sure. That's right. So you can get healthy and support our show. And give us a call if you're up, 877-927-6648. So I wanted to start today with talking a little bit about the... Uh the meat thing that's going on because yeah, we've been talking a lot about this franken meat yeah and because it's in the news a lot and that's the reason being and of course it's uh, being we, pushed it's being pushed on to us, be accepted. And it's also i see some vilification of meat itself mm -hmm. so i wanted to start off you know uh they talk about here on uh the thing about meatless mondays and vegetables forward restaurants plant-based diets foraging meat is more mainstream than ever. Foregoing meat, excuse me, is mm -hmm. more mainstream than ever. And at the center of this movement is a new wave of plant-based products like the two that we mentioned before. It just reminds me of the story of uh, the Catholic Church making Friday's fish day. Right? Yeah, very similar. It's very much a social control thing. Yeah, and mm -hmm. they did that because they wanted to keep the meats for the kings, queens, and the higher echelon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so right. Because at that There's time... There's always a reason. Well, remember, at that time, it was the Dark Ages in Europe, mm -hmm. and in the, the, they were going through a grand solar minimum, which we might may be starting to go through, That's too. why I knew you'd take us. That's yeah, what and mm -hmm. so, you know, when things get bad and the animals, uh, you know, you, we notice animals from the wild starting to come in and wanting the food that we have. Because they're having a hard time because finding the food. they're having a hard time in nature itself. So the whole thing changes, and this is... Interesting to me. Uh, there's a dozen uh, restaurants in the Boston area. Mm -hmm. uh, diners can now order a variety of dishes from meatballs to uh, medium rare burgers. And there's still vegetarian things you can go. Uh, there's lab grown meats, also referred to as cultured meat or what they call clean meat. Isn't that a neat way of oh, putting yeah. it? Stop and think about it though. If you truly, uh, for ethical reasons, mm -hmm. don't eat meat. Mm -hmm. uh, I even don't like that word, ethical reasons, as if you're a more well, ethical you? person because you don't eat meat. Then why would you want things that look like meat on your plate? Well, that's true, too. And why would you want it to look like blood? Yeah, exactly. And why would you want it to taste like meat if you're really against it? I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things like that that you... Yeah, but diet and identity are really linked. Yeah. You know, we are what we eat. We've been right. told, and vegetarians or vegans, vegans... Uh, not eating meat or meat products can be a public declaration of one's identity, You're morals, and yourself. lifestyle. You're telling people, look, at this is the kind of person I am. I'm it's a, a kind person. It's a philosophy and ethics, right? I'm kind. I'm, I, I don't yeah. hurt other beings. It also seems like a more left-leaning type of agenda. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that. That uh, I heard John Legend said that the other day that most people who are creative are... Uh, 
you know, have to be liberal. Otherwise, you're not a creative person, which is ridiculous. It, it's totally ridiculous. Yeah. But there's a, there's a higher than thou feeling right. on the left. I'm so sorry. And, and on the right, I, too. I well, see it on both sides. Well, you know, but yeah. what I'm saying, yeah, exactly. There's a one size rather. So let's say on the other side, omnivores. Mm -hmm. Uh, consuming meat can play a central role in social and family traditions. You know, I guess holidays and well, summer barbecues, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Turkey, be kind of hard. Uh, in these settings, the meat alternatives are allowable, but they're not part of the main fare. You yeah. know, the other thing I was listening to David Devine over the weekend. Tofurky. Did yeah. you have your tofurky? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be horrible? Uh, so I was listening to David Devine, and they're talking about the grand solar minimum coming, and. Um, and we don't know when it's coming. We don't know if it's this this cycle or maybe the next cycle. Probably more like the ne next cycle. So we have 11 more years of bad weather, but it's going to get worse, they say. But what they're saying with this is that, and I just lost my train of thought, so. That's okay. Um, well, you're watching David Devine. Oh, yeah, I'm watching uh -huh. David Devine. And they were talking about the pork. And, of course, they have this disease going through there, the swine flu, which has decimated probably about 60 or 70 percent of their meats. In China? Course, in China. And right. now they're showing up in Norway, showing mm -hmm. up in the Scandinavian countries, down in Germany also. So, Does that and, have a lot of the reasons why uh, President Trump was able to sell rice to China? Yeah. I, I bet it is. Yeah. Sure. yeah. But also, I mean, they're preparing. They're, they're stockpiling rice. So they, mm -hmm. they grow enough rice themselves. But with changing weathers, who knows? But with the David Devine, he was talking about it's so traditional for pork. So if you're a person in China and you have company and you don't serve pork, oh, well, you're looked down upon. Wow, yeah. Yeah, you're a different caste system or something like that. Mm -hmm. So he says this is so essential that that's why they're buying pork from the United States. And that's why a couple of years ago they bought the largest pork vendor in the United States who the Chinese now own. Wow. So, uh, you know, this is something that uh, is a very big tradition in many, many countries. Uh, if you look at South America, they have beef, pork, everybody loves meat. So now we're trying to get rid of meat in the psyche of the people. That's what I see happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know if it's good or bad. I just think that some of these foods are just not that great for you. And, you know, me going more and more towards a carnivore diet uh, it just makes it seem to me that they're really going the, the wrong way because my health is better right. than ever. Well, and regardless, I'm, I'm a true omnivore. I eat a lot mm -hmm. of different things. But uh, my point is whenever I see um, people that are in the know or in power trying to tell us what to do, I'm very mm -hmm. suspicious. About that word with my braces. I'm suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> well, it says here altering our diets uh, can seem like changing who we are as people. So changing meat is going to ch affect the way we think about ourselves. It definitely makes us uh, things more complicated. Are mm -hmm. vegetarians still vegetarians if they eat in vitro meat? In other words, if you're eating fake well, like meat, said, are, you, are you still a vegetarian because you're thinking about the meat? Uh, I mean, that's how silly it kind of gets. I it, it really does get silly if you start to think about it, you know. And uh, I just I, I, I always love the one thing you said, um, if you were stuck in the woods, what would you eat? Yeah, well, it's a no-brainer because you know, there's nothing out there to eat but meat. And if you can find it now, it's going to get tougher and tougher and tougher. Mm -hmm. But there are people who are very good at the identifying plants. And mm -hmm. I think we need to get back to those things because if the meat is going away, we need to know what kind of vegetables to eat and that are good for us, that's for sure. It's interesting, though. Um, today's plant-based meats of the imagination and the dollars of celebrities, chefs, and professionals. So we'll be right back. Watch who's telling you what to do. That's for sure. <laughs> You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. 
Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're continuing the conversation about Beyond Meat, the new meat alternative. And as we know, the media really is a propaganda tool. And, you know, here you go. Ten reasons why plant-based uh, meat uh, patties beat meat. And we and get ten yeah. reasons why we want to look at a plant-based burger so over a meat-based burger. What I want to do with this is the, to kind of deconstruct it. Is this true or not from our point of view? Yeah, okay. because obviously the powers that be that, you know, ordered this article to be written. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's the way it works. Yeah. And this was written in 2017, so this is not... Oh, they're, yeah, they're creating the, yeah. the idea that they want to steer public opinion. So the first thing is versatile and delicious flavors. Ever uh, taste a plant-based burger? It can be argued that the reason people enjoy the taste of meat is due to the added seasoning, which, surprise, surprise, comes from plants, naturally, of course. And, of course, ver uh, vegan burgers are made completely entirely from plants, so that really makes sense that it would be the flavor. And it's true that some of the flavors do come from plants, but a lot of flavors also come from meat. Yeah, I'm not a big seasoner of my meat. I like salt mm. and pepper. Yeah, salt I mean, and pepper is pretty mm. much the thing. But the other seasonings we use a lot in roasts and in, mm -hmm. you know, Rosemary. soups and things like that. And I think our ancestors, when they first started cooking meat, maybe didn't throw it on the fire. Maybe they did throw it on the fire. I don't know. But I'm thinking somewhere along the line, somebody made a pot, put water in it, and that's a good way to extract nutrients. Mm -hmm. from not only meat, but also from All plants. All from plants. Yeah. That makes the tincture That's more right. or less. Yeah. Number, Number two, two plant-based is better for you. Who says? Yeah. Uh, Who it says? says lacks the hormones and carcinogens of saturated and saturated fats oh, and, and trans and, fat and here's the burger. Oh, and here's the attitude. Ew. Very. <laughs> yeah, it does say that, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Let me put that out there because that's... That's kind of what they always do. And don't trans they? fats that a burger made from animal protein doesn't. Said they are full of fiber and nutrients. You know, we've we've talked about on the show. Who says even fiber is necessarily good for us? Well, first of all, hormones and carcinogens is not in the meat that I eat. If I can help it, right? For sure. So that is out right away. Saturated fat, yeah, and I want saturated fat. That's one of the reasons that we eat this stuff for yeah. the saturated fat. It's the greatest that is, fat there is. That is the healthier fat. And the correct. trans fat, uh, they vilified saturated fat as trans fat. 
Well, it's remember not... that trans fats come from vegetable oils. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That's yeah. a good point for sure. <laughs> right. Okay, and then it says uh, the plant base are full of uh, fiber, which we don't think is that great for you. Well, not certainly the kind of fiber that is, comes from the cellulose in a plant. You know, right. We can't break it down. Right. Yeah. That's exactly right. And mm -hmm. most of it we can't. Some of it's solubles, but cook a lot it. of it's, yeah. Yeah, cooked vegetables. And also it says nutrients, of course. There's more nutrients in a piece of, you know, grass-fed good meat, for sure. Mm -hmm. Some of the burgers, maybe not. It depends where you get it. So source is going to be huge in this. I always love that what Dr. Pompa said. It's not the food. It's what we do to the food. Yeah. Like raising the cows in an unclean environment. Right. That's what we got to think about. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, meat can stick to you in your colon. I, I, I disagree. I think the, uh, the fiber is mm -hmm. the more thing. But there's a reason gluten is called gluten, glue. Yeah. And I always ask the question, if it's gluten-free, what's holding it together? Mm -hmm. Some other kind of glue. Yeah. I mean, it's still the same stuff. I, it may... I agree. Yeah. So, okay. Number three. Save the earth. Again, the guilt yeah. that by uh, being an animal or a carnivore, uh, Animal eater or carnivore uh, means that you're less ethical and well, that you're not caring about the earth. I let's think, that's think about it. Let's think about, you know, gardening is completely different than we think, than mm -hmm. we say the modern farming. Yep. And modern farming basically is taking one product and making fields and fields and fields of it. So mm -hmm. the insects can come in there and say, boy, we got a lot to eat. We better make more babies. Mm -hmm. It also ruins the, the, the crops. Yep. Uh, all kinds of pests get in, rodents and, and everything like that. And there's not the rotation. Yeah, there's, yeah and uh, now... And nutrients are extracted, and exactly. some of them are overabundant. Mm -hmm. And that's what they say, what attracts a plant, I mean, a, a pest, is an unhealthy plant. That's well, right. Well, if the soil's not balanced, then the plant's not going to be healthy. Right. And then the bugs come in. That's right. The yeah. wild has a way of doing it all without the bugs overtaking everything. There's mm -hmm. a nice balance there. It says here, plant-based burgers such as the Impossible Burger use 75% less water. 95% land and create 87% greenhouse gas emissions. So let's break it down. They use less water? I don't know. I mean, a cow probably drinks a lot of water, but plants use a lot of water too. Mm -hmm. I don't see how they can even th say this. 95% less land. No, if you're growing these huge fields in Kansas City of corn and of maize and of, well, maize is corn, but uh, corn and soy, mm -hmm. primarily the two that are Canola. here. That's not very healthy for the soil. It's not healthy for the land. Right. And where are the animals now that the, those lands are there? All the animals that were in the woods. Remember that Indiana was a woodland yes, it paradise. Was. It was. And in 20 years, they cut all, all the trees down. Yeah. 20 years for farming. Mm -hmm. So all the animals that were living in those woods. So this is a bunch of crap here. It really is. And here you go again. I mean, the I'm, guilt, guilt, guilt. Well, let's, four. let's go to that one. The create. Uh, they create 87% less greenhouse gas emissions. Yeah, but that's just bull. Well, it is bull because the, if the cows are eating the corn and the soy, they're going to emit a lot of gas. But if they're eating the grass, not so. So mm -hmm. it is bull. So if we right. went, yeah, if we went back to the way we're supposed exactly. to, yeah. to raise animals. Number four. So, yeah, it was. You can eat cruelty-free. And, mm -hmm. again, as if we're cruel because we're eating the foods that really we were ideally suited to have. So where is the cruelty part? Is, is it in the slaughter or is it in the captive of the captivating an animal and keeping him in the cage while you're doing it? I think that's more cruel. Mm -hmm. You're keeping these huge farms of cattle crammed together. And this is where all these diseases, these modern diseases of, you know, that's going through the pigs now and sometimes the cows and things because of cramped quarters. You know, what bothers me is that young people read these articles and then uh, you hear of all these young people who are starting to have families. Mm -hmm. And while we're on the break, I'll show you a picture. Some young girl posts a picture of her little three-month-old infant and saying, this little vegan is really getting strong. So no, no breast milk. Right. <laughs> so, so no, she's saying, this little vegan, right, right. Yeah. I mean, who knows? The baby looks so sickly. Yeah, well, oh. if she's not raised on milk in the beginning, the mother's milk, uh, vegetarian, so she must be eating the soy. If I can find that picture, you know, it's one of those things I yeah. screenshot it, we should show people. Okay, the last thing in here mm -hmm. says, uh, uh, without care in the world about how many animals had their lives cut short by your meal. Uh, many of the animals that uh, we use uh, have lived a full life, but mm -hmm. also in the wild they get eaten while they're alive. 
a lot of people don't really think about that too much. Yeah. Well, when we slaughter them, we slaughter them very humanely. It's very painless. That's a good we know point. I never it. really thought about it like that, but you're right. It's a huge, uh -huh. huge thing, I think. You know, I told you my nephew um, moved to Alabama and bought land, built his own house, mm -hmm. and hunts for most of their food. Oh, nice. Yeah, in that Paradise cool? for sure. Mm -hmm. Number five, what cancer? Uh, PBBs don't cre uh, increase your chances of developing cancer growth. Processed meat is uh, classed as a group one carcinogen. That's really <laughs> unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Processed meat. So mm -hmm. they're uh, actually saying that all the meat must be processed then. Yeah, you I know, mean, it's just, uh, they always throw this in here when we talk every about... Every one in four deaths are from cancer, and like I said, by the time you read this article, you're like, oh my God, I've got to quit eating meat. It's such a propaganda yes, tool. Yes, it is, and you know, when they say that, uh, you know, processed meat is classified, some of it is, yeah, if you're going to have the normal hot dog or maybe a uh, burger with that slime in it or whatever they're creating out there as a sausage, it may be that. But also, there's many, many traditions that we've done that for years. Yeah, and from it's not. Holland, yeah, Germany, exactly, Austria, I mean, healthy, So we'll go on healthy. with this when uh, we get back, folks. Okay, stick okay. around. to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balance results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. kind of deconstructing this article about why uh, you may want to eat plant-based patties instead of real meat. And number six was save money. 
But, you know, I don't agree with that, Nico, because I think that when you don't eat animal foods, you don't get that satiation. So you'll see people have, they eat more frequently. They have bags of little snick snacks and things to eat. Do you notice that? Yes. The other thing, it brings me back to the old days when we first moved to Canada and we were out in the country uh, on this ranch. And the rancher saved one cow for himself. You know, he was mm-hmm. bartering the other cows or selling them and stuff, but he kept for himself. He says, that's the cheapest thing I do. He's out in the pasture just uh, getting my meal ready for the end of the year. And uh, all the work that he did was for his plant-based work. Yeah. He was slaving over the fields and everything like that, but the old cow was doing its work by itself. Mm-hmm. So I think and maybe economically today it might be more expensive because of the way we structure things, but if we start going backwards a little bit, it's going to be much easier for a family to feed. Imagine if you had a couple of acres of land, a couple of animals that are roaming around, or uh, if we were more in the wild and you could hunt, it's a lot less expensive and a lot less intensive as far as labor is concerned. Sure. I really believe Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Uh, uh, food derived, uh, derived from plants are the most inexpensive available. See, I, I don't see that, and uh, you're very vulnerable, and like you said, you're eating more, too. Eating vegan. Well, the other thing is yeah. a lot of the... Um, uh, Vegetables that we have today are chemical cocktails. They've well, been yeah. sprayed and sprayed. Yeah. We don't have the 160 some types of things in our diet anymore. We have uh, the mustard seed pretty much. Yeah, and here's another one that's scary: the, the pink, pink slime. slime. Yeah. Okay, well we all agree. All of us, even those of us that eat meat, would agree we don't want to eat pink slime. Right. And um, you know, this author says the plant-based burgers are free of pink slime. Well, I don't know what they actually are. Yeah, There's some concoction of all kinds of weird well, the stuff. Well, th- the thing is, don't go to McDonald's and the uh, other places to get your burgers. If you want a burger, you make it yourself and get some ground beef from your butcher, and you yeah. know what, where that came from. That's mm-hmm. the thing for that. Number eight is bye-bye E. coli. And this oh, really? Is completely... most, of the, most of the E. coli? Yeah. <laughs> Everything I've ever read, most of the time, is, and it's easier to inspect the meat, believe me. Well, usually it's the E. coli breakouts are on vegetables. Yes. You know, so... Yeah. But tainted from meats That's and things what they're like saying. that. Yeah, yeah. okay. Well, tainted because, because they're, of, they're watering the vegetables with cow runoff. There you go. From industrial yeah. cow stuff. Yeah. That wouldn't happen in, if we raised our animals right. Yeah. And rock number nine, rock that body. Due oh. to plant-based burgers being free from saturated and trans fat, they generally have a lower calorie uh, content per gram when compared to a meat burger. Right. People who choose a plant-based diet tend to have a lower body fat content, less cholesterol, I would disagree with that. If you look at the latest uh, things on the carnivore diet and the keto diet, people are slimming down. Oh, or even just people who eat real food. Uh, you mm, know, again, exactly. I, I, I feel like when we try and skew ourselves to one way of eating, we really, you know, invite a lot of problems, I think. I think that simply realizing that we need to eat real food and not be tied into these extremes. Yeah. So here, number 10 is better quality protein in vegetables, which we know that protein in vegetables are the problem for digestion. Right, and they are not better quality. Now, I believe there are probably some people that have the bacteria uh, who have uh, maybe their ancestry has been a long time. You're living more in a uh, climate that uh, is closer to the equator. Right. So you have a much more abundance of plants, but a lot of those plants that are down there, like the coconut and things, have the good saturated fat that we want out of mm-hmm. animals, and they're just about as good. Not quite as good, but... A lot of those tropical people, um, islands and, and so forth, and equatorial areas, uh, animal-based food is part of their diet. A big part they're of their diet. Stews, and maybe fish, eating, and maybe pork. And maybe even grubs and things that we think mm-hmm. are kind of icky, but they oh, traditionally... Oh, when we, when we were it. in Asia, you mm-hmm. saw all kinds of bugs for yeah. sale. Well, those markets in Asia, that's... That's where it's at. When you go see a market in Asia, you haven't seen nothing in the United States like that ever. No. Because everything is hanging there, uh, nothing's refrigerated, and everything works fine. Yeah. It's amazing. And there's, I mean, the bugs, I mean... There's flies on it, so it doesn't really make any difference because people have gotten used, their stomachs are used to it. We got a comment. Thank you for unpacking and dissecting some facts on Frankenstein. Oh, you're welcome. You know, we, we see this. There's... The whole media is trying to tell everyone that we need to move away from our sacred animal foods, traditional foods, uh, and accept a lot of these fake uh, plant-based foods. Uh, Let's eat some real plant-based foods, but these things that they're making and profiting from, there's a reason they want to have the meats for themselves. Yeah. Well, maybe. I don't know. I think so. Yeah, that could very well be. 
Here's a uh, one that comes from vegannews.com. Uh, vegan meat may soon become cheaper than the animal-based counterparts, according to the new re report. And w w the way it is now, it's much more expensive. It's about 20 to 30 percent more mm -hmm. to eat these foods. And uh, I think it's just kind of uh, the tip of the iceberg because they are going to make it cheaper. There's no doubt about that because mm -hmm. the cost of meat is going to go up. Mm -hmm. especially with the weather changing and the problems we had in the United States and other countries are having this too, is that the growing zones are moving. This reminds me of, um, did you hear about that uh, Democratic presidential candidate Bloomberg, what he said? Well, I don't know, but I know that uh, uh, nobody's uh, listening to him too, too much anymore. What he but. said was, you know, um, we got to, uh, you know, tax the poor, so they don't buy the things that they that are bad for them and that kill them. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's too short to be a president, as far as I'm concerned. So. Yeah, well. I think the perfect president would be the the, the gay guy. Huh? The gay guy. That'd be the, that'd be the natural switch. We go from one extreme to the other extreme, kind of. Oh. Who'd check? Mm, okay. Yeah, so. Mm-hmm. Well, but, you know, politics is completely, has nothing to do with our lives if we do the right thing. No, but it just made me think when I was talking about the foods. Yeah. Here we are, there, there's a, an attempt to steer people to what's healthy. Yeah. And, um, you know, he probably has stock in Beyond Meat. Oh, so I'm sure I'm, they do. <laughs> um, so uh, this is a whole article about that the companies uh, are uh, going to make this more available and cheaper as we go along. So... Uh, kind of an incentive to buy this stuff because if we buy it now in three or four years it's going to be le much less expensive and then we're going to be used to do it and we won't be having that X factor anymore mm -hmm. and maybe they'll hey here we'll someone made a comment about buying the Beyond Meats and he says he broke down and paid five ninety nine local grocery store for a Beyond Meat burger he goes yeah I forgot profit and I may add they were the most god awful things I ate in a very long time they smell terrible when cooking, taste it odd, and the mouth feels like they were made from plastic. Terrible taste and very expensive. Yeah, I had somebody else say that when you bite into it, it's really hard to bite through it because it is kind of plastic-like. Yeah. So My it doesn't whole point is, apart. why are they doing that? Because, you know, if you're a true uh, ethical vegan or vegetarian or whatever, you're not eating it because you don't like, you don't like that idea of eating meat, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's just interesting yeah. to me. It says, while these limiting factors are still in play, and the limiting factors are, uh, of course, they're not growing much of this right now. It mm -hmm. started out in a lab. They're using peas or they're using soy. They may be using other things uh, in the future. And as they get good at doing this, it's going to bring down the price. Mm -hmm. On the manufacturing side, vegan brand Rebellious Foods, formerly the Seattle Food Tech, aims to reduce the price of all plant-based meat products with a high-capacity production methods, which uh, it uses to make its own vegan chicken nuggets and plans to license other companies to use it, too. So, well, this is our future, I guess. Well, and we'll get back to covering more about the meat you may or may not be buying. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. 
Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting tfnn.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So here we go, straight out of the propaganda piece Huffington Post. 70% of supermarket ground beef contains pink slime. Now, do you get a you get the feeling that they really don't want anyone eating meat. Yeah, that's for sure. And and uh, sure, most of us know that have been those of you following our show, we don't recommend you buy conventional supermarket meat. Mm -hmm. You know, and one of the ways you can solve that is you can pick out a a, a, a roast and or, have them grind it up, and then it. just ask the butcher there to grind it for you. That way, you know what you're getting. Yeah. So they're really talking about uh, the kind of ground beef that is in the supermarkets, mm -hmm. the kind of ground beef that you get uh, at the fast food places, exactly. and all of them have this stuff in it. And it shows that 70 percent of ground beef sold in supermarkets contains the ammonia-treated sludge. Yep. And I, I'm not surprised, but we're not advocating eating that kind of meat. We've always said, choose your farmers. Choose your sources wisely when you get these important foods that are for you and your family's health. And, um, and it says the majority of ground beef in America contains these substances. If you want to have a hamburger, make it yourself with ground beef that you know where it came from. Yeah, and also the, the, the idea of calling it meat, there's a big backlash now that you can't name non-meat meat. You know, uh, you can say, you call it fake meat. You, can, you shouldn't even be kind of allowed to say meat in there if it's made out of vegetables. This is a vegetable burger. What's wrong with that? If you're a vegan and you're a vegetarian, why wouldn't you want that? Because mm -hmm. they're trying to convince the non-ones. Right. They're saying, oh, this is still meat. It's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what the way I see it. Yeah. The, so the meaning the of meat has to be kind of discussed, and I think it's starting to be discussed and probably some people are going to put patents on things like that and right. uh, maybe have a consensus that if it's not meat, let's not call it meat because we're not saying the hamburger that you're eating is part vegetable, so let's call it a vegetable burger. Mm. We're, not, we're not doing that, are we? <laughs> you're trying to get the vegans to eat that? I mean, that's not, it just doesn't make any sense to me. But there was another article that I wanted to get to to kind of show you the importance of what we're talking about, and that's this article about breast milk. Well, I put this one in here, Nico, because I find it fascinating um, that really what's going on is I've always come back to it's, it's what we eat somewhat, but it's really about a circadian rhythm. Mm -hmm. And there's more to drinking breast milk than in the nutrients in it, the physical. Well, but this is the well, time it's a physical stamp. contact with, with oh, the yeah, mother, huge absolutely. and important thing. Uh, you know, when you're skin to skin with somebody, that's as close as you can get. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, for a baby, this is so important. 
and I, I was lucky. I was breastfed uh, for a couple of years, yeah. and mainly due to the war, my dad had to go on a bike for 26 miles to right. get his quart of milk every morning, so my mother could drink that straight from the cow, mm -hmm. and then I could have my meal. Uh, and I think two years is probably the minimum that our ancestors did. That's what we, we like to tell people, that, you know, uh, between two and, a ha two and a half is ideal mm -hmm. for, so, for children. So uh, my question to the vegetarians are, will you not allow your baby to have the animal food, which is human milk? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a question, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. The I don't know. I think that. a lot of them would probably argue, oh, yeah, um, but I believe a lot of them may have trouble breastfeeding. Because they're not getting the nutrition. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's um, a good point. I know that I learned that from Dr. Marshall, that um, when women were having trouble with breast milk, he would recommend nutritional yeast. What's it loaded with? B vitamins. Where do you get B vitamins? Meat. Yeah. You know? So sleeping, eating, and energy levels all show circadian rhythms, which means they follow a, a daily cycle. Mm -hmm. As any parent who has been sleepwalking through a 3 a.m. feeding knows, infants are not born with the rhythms well, fully Well, the whole set. point is this breast milk composition changes. Um, I, I'm not sure the they're not born with that. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know where they get this. Maybe they're not born. Well, I mean, it, what we're trying to say is because modern that, living it disrupts it so much, they're not born with it. They if the mother is having a, a circadian clock, her breast milk is going to contain different nutrients at different times of but the day. But wouldn't the nine months inside the mother automatically sync them up? I mean, that's the way I'm thinking. But, well, yeah, no, but we're not talking about syncing them up with circadian rhythm. We're talking about the nutrients that are delivered oh, I see are manufactured okay. at different times okay. because of the time. I see you know, probably more um, nutrients that help with uh, creating certain neurotransmitters. And researchers believe this chrononutrition may help provide program will help infants emerging circadian biology, the internet, the internal timekeeper that allows babies to distinguish between day and night. So breastfeeding babies probably get onto a, a good sleep schedule, maybe perhaps better than... Yeah, and I think in the old days, everybody slept in the same room or the same hut or whatever it was. And I think that connected everybody together, too. They and, called that, you know, bottled milk might be mistimed milk on, mm -hmm. an, infant's mis on an infant's development, but the implications are potentially far-reaching, and I believe it's true. And it says, but scientists know very little about why circadian biology comes online on such different schedules for different infants. Breast milk may help program infant uh, circadian rhythms, helping to explain why some parents of newborns enjoy long nights of full sleep, while mm -hmm. others struggle with that. Right. Yep. Yeah, and, and we don't, we really know very little about why circadian biology comes on on such different schedules, right? But it really could help the infants get on a schedule. And overall, your child's going to get nutrition that's based on when they need to get it. Yeah, uh, so for most of our human history, breast milk could only be consumed directly from the breast, meaning that milk was always ingested right from where it was At the produced. Right temperature. And, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Now, with the advent of the breast pumps and refrigeration, that's no longer the case. Now, according to a survey in 2005-2007, over 85% of breastfeeding mothers in the U.S. have pumped their milk. So that's a disconnect for sure. Well, it is, but, but I, think, people... I think it's better. I mean, I actually had to do pumping uh, 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 with Austin because of uh, some of his mouth issues. But, right, um, yeah, I can see that. Uh, but I did it, you mm -hmm. know, because it was important. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but I think, again, if you're holding your baby close... Yeah. You get that. But, and uh, let's think about what uh, disrupts this whole system. School, work, you know, the mother now has to work. So six months, or six, yeah, six months goes by, she goes back to work. In some cases, even three months. And now, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, who's feeding the baby? A stranger, or if you're lucky, maybe another family member. Or yeah. maybe she can take it to work. There's, that's happening today, too. So that would be a big boom. But I think that the first couple of years, I mean... Yeah, the work, I mean, our ancient ancestors used to slave in the fields, if you're talking about agriculture, and mm -hmm. the women did a lot of that work with the baby right, right on, you know, in the front or the back or whatever. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, the work isn't the, really the problem. It's the problem that we're not paying attention to the child. If mm -hmm. you're not feeding the child properly, and I would say if you're not, it's not on the breast or at least pumping, then it's not being fed properly because this is nature's system. Uh, there's no better system that we've ever found. I mean, this brings you back to stasis, right? Exactly. I mean, it's, how huge is it, I think? But, but what this article really dives into, though, is it talks about the difference in the milk at different times of the day. You know, for example, nighttime milk has higher levels of certain uh, DNA building blocks. Yeah. And 
day male, by contrast, has more activity promoting amino acids. So uh, it depends when you're pumping it. If you're pumping it, then you need to label it. Well, that's what we're, I was going to get to. Okay. So what we're saying is, is that whereas earlier people would pump their milk and just throw it in the container and yeah. freeze it, perhaps you, would, you should time stamp it not for dating or spoilage, but for getting the right nutrients at the right time. Yeah. And that's something that I think that's new. I, I really, you know, but now that we know how important circadian rhythm is, really, it's our, our biological clock. It makes total sense. Yeah. Okay. We'll be right back, folks. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Think or Swim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. So we know that uh, a mother is an important healthy food uh, for her children, and also cows make milk. But this is something else. This is a funny article. Russian dairy farmer gives their cows virtual reality goggles yeah. with hopes that they would be happier and make better milk. No kidding, folks. Check out that happy cow. You and can see him. Yeah, Look at him there. There's a video, and uh, the guy comes out, and he also plays music, and I've seen different things where the cows are out in the field. Somebody guys, somebody comes with a trumpet or an organ or something like that and leave starts playing, those. and they come, and they really enjoy that. Oh, leave it to those health-oriented Russians. Quite frankly, they're very healthy people. Mm -hmm. they, they don't allow GMOs in their country. They produce their own food, and this farm just outside of Moscow is testing the glasses and says it's in an effort to increase the quality and quantity of the milk produced. And they don't know the results of the study, but the cow's wearing them, and they're checking out to see if a happy cow produces a different quality of milk. 
Yeah, so they strap these goggles on the cow, and the cow <laughs> thinks it's out in the field. So uh -huh. uh, I don't know if he uh, can smell the grass or, you uh -huh. know, all these other senses that are involved in it. You know, it I says, don't know it says they're going to have to do further study, but yeah, at first test did reveal a decrease in anxiety and an increase in the emotional mood of the herd, uh, the release said. And to be fair, if, it, if we were transported to a vast field in the summertime, our anxiety and mood would improve, too. I, my mood would always improve any time I'm outdoors. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, sure. Maybe not as much with the goggles on, though. Yeah. And it says um, it's not just the Russian dairy farmers that are going uh, the extra mile to keep their cows happy. Uh, some Wagyu farmers set mood lighting, among other tricks, to keep their cows calm and producing the best beef possible. Other times they play music. Uh, one yeah, Missouri sure. farmer leads, uh, says he leads to better milk. Uh, also, uh, of course, in Japan, they're known for uh, massaging the cows. Mm -hmm. You know, giving me a nice massage once a day and things well, like that. Who doesn't feel good? Exactly. That? Yeah, look at that. They even have Live Oak, Florida, talking about something maybe has some cows and maybe not. Just Only continuing. Yep. But that's you know, stuff. it's a crazy world, folks. You know, you got to choose your battles and you got to figure out what to eat. And uh, you know what we're doing, so uh, you know you got to find your own way. Hopefully, uh, this helps a little bit. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.